It's Dykes. It's Mooney. Yeah! Gotham need to call on someone. Erin Cuthbert can so often be that player. The ball way off. There's Kenny Dalglish making the angle for the shot. Dalglish makes it 3-1. And he pulled a Scottish scoring record. Rachel, welcome to the Scotland national team podcast. Thank you. Good to have you here. Recording the first one of the season here in sunny Spain. Before we go any further though, I think we should um, mention the fact that this podcast is to mark International Women's Day 2024. Um, what, what does International Women's Day mean to you? This is one of these questions that you always get asked at this time of year and it's really quite hard to answer. <laughs> I'm so glad I asked you that. <laughs> Kicking off with a hard question. Um, It'll get easier. I'll be honest, I don't often do anything grand to mm -hmm. sort of celebrate it or promote it but I do still think it's I think it is important because I think it's just an acknowledgement that um there are a lot of women who already have pushed through a lot of barriers mm. to achieve a lot of things that have changed sort of the landscape of how opportunities can can now be and that there, there is a lot more equality than there was and there's obviously still a lot more work still to do um, and that's probably why it's still important to acknowledge it and, and make sure it's something that you know there is an awareness of because I think there are still things that can be done better mm -hmm. um, and obviously as a female that's something that mm -hmm. I probably feel quite passionate about. Yeah do you think it's one of those things though I know you say you don't really mark anything grand for the day in particular and probably more so because it's important that that's remembered every day that what we're pushing towards for whether it's in home life, work life, as a woman, that it's just kind of in, ingrained more now throughout society every day? Yeah, I think so. And um, I think as well, there's an element of what, what we do, especially within female sport, mm -hmm. there, there probably is more work done on a continual basis. So mm -hmm. it is probably something that maybe that day doesn't feel like I do anything specifically for it, but there, it's maybe just because I think there's a feeling of um, those of us that have been in the women's game for a long time have probably felt a lot of those similar battles in terms of equality and, and trying to, you know, pave a way for more opportunities. It's kind of been something that you're continually surrounded by, you're, you're very aware of anyway. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's a really important day, but as you say, I think it's something that probably in the world we live in, we're, we're quite aware of that mm -hmm. more days of the year than just that one. We got really deep really quick there. We did, we did. Didn't anticipate going that deep that <laughs> Sorry. quickly. Did so you want a quick answer? We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna rein it back a little bit and we're just gonna get stuck into some random questions. Just get the tempo going. Okay, let's go. Get your heart rate up. Um, oh gosh. And I don't know if we'll do that, but okay. you know, we'll we'll go for some random questions. So we're gonna go um I'll aim for ten. Okay. Right, but we might end up doing more than ten. Let's just see what it takes us. Do it quickly though. I don't want you like spending loads of time. This isn't like a deep dive. I'm ready, I'm ready. Okay, yep. first one. Um, what's your favourite season? So, like season of the year? Not like, oh yes, season, but yeah. What season. kind of other season? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I least I was thinking like TV series and I was like, mm, she said season, not season. series. Season. Um, season. I'm going to say spring. Do you want to tell me why? Yeah. I, I know I said don't do a deep dive, but I'm actually quite interested in <laughs> Tried why. Tried to do quick fire, didn't right. do enough. Yeah. <laughs> Slow it down. <laughs> um, I'm saying spring because I just think that that's often winter feels, you know, especially in the UK, can feel mm. longer than just a few months. Yeah. So I think just once you start to to feel the weather change, sort of the longer mm -hmm. the longer days, it being a little brighter in the morning and staying a little brighter later at night, mm -hmm. I think I enjoy that. Um, I think the flowers are pretty. Um, I do like summer too because I do like the warm weather, but um, you know, sp spring for me is just that change. I feel yeah. I really appreciate that change when it comes. I think that's it. Like you do feel ready for whatever season it is, just a change in it. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah, I feel that. I feel that. Uh, that wasn't very quick, but um, what's your? Who do you text the most? Lisa, my fiance. That's obvious. Well, I have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll leave that one there. Uh, how often do you floss? Your teeth. Um, <laughs> genuine. 
<laughs> well, you could do the dance the floss. Uh, okay, well, the dance the floss is a very rare occasion. But you have done it. I have done it. She's done it. It's less than annual, I'd say. Is it good? It's okay. Okay, good. Um, floss my teeth every day. Do you? Yeah, I've actually, but um, this isn't a quick answer again, sorry. <laughs> I would say I've been very unfortunate. I don't have, I blame my dad for this and he takes responsibility, but I don't have great teeth, so mm -hmm. I've spent too many days in the dentist chair. They look all right. They look okay, but I've had a lot of work done. My, oh. my dentist is very good, shout out to June. Okay, so they, they should look good. Yeah. Because they've been paid for. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, what, um, I don't know what to ask you. What's your, is your bed made just now? Yes. Oh, your bed made? Absolutely, every day. Do you know what here, Thleen? The beds are quite big and mm. I literally just fold a little triangle mm -hmm. on one side, get in. And see, when I wake up in the morning, I'd say three quarters of the bed is still made. I just yeah. fold that one triangle back. Yeah. But no. yeah, I always make my bed in the morning. They Absolutely. Are, they're quite hard to dismantle the entire bed here. Yeah. Um, all right, good job on being neat. Yeah, um, no, definitely. How do you answer the phone? Like, when you answer your phone, like, what's your answer voice? What do you say? <laughs> like, I'm phoning in, Do you know what? In my head, I this is how it goes. So I'd answer the phone, I'd be like, hello? Hello? But to me, it's quite like a, it's like a warm hello, but I think to the person who's phoned me, I think I'm known to be quite stern on the phone. Yeah. A bit scary at first. Does it depend who's phoning? On. You're like, hello? A little bit. <laughs> like if Lisa was to phone me, I'd probably answer with something silly. Yeah. Um, okay. But yeah. All right, that's fair. Um, who's your favourite Disney character? Are you a Disney person? Mm -mm. This won't work if you're not. I'm not a Disney person. <laughs> okay. Disney. Disney, like... Like Mickey Mouse? <laughs> I guess. I mean... Like, there's a million Disney princesses, there's a million, like... There wasn't a million when I was growing up, though. Not a million, like maybe 500 or something. Beauty and the Beast? Yeah, no, I wasn't, a, I wasn't a Beauty and the Beast girl. Pocahontas. <sighs> That's Disney, right? Pocahontas is good. Okay. You go with her? Yeah. Iconic. Um, there wasn't a million when I was growing up. No, there's 30 not years a million. Ago. That was like <laughs> an over exaggeration. Definitely not a million. Um, what's no? That's. I'm gonna ask you what's what's one thing or one moment you wish you'd enjoyed more. But that's quite deep. That's deep. We can come back to that if you want. One moment. Mm. Um, I'll honestly say I, I wish I enjoyed the World Cup more. Mm -hmm. And. It, like irrelevant other results I think you spend that whole time just feeling stressed out about everything and anything and you're trying to not play the occasion and just play the games but at the end of the day is the World Cup so mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean you, you do that whole psychological thing of trying to not get too high and too low and in turn yeah I wish I'd I, lo I loved it I did enjoy mm -hmm. it but I think I'd, I didn't quite do it justice taking it in yeah How, is yeah. that something that you've kind of learn to do more as you've grown in your career is just to kind of take the moments in or do you still think you might be a little bit no, still rubbish. caught up? I'm rubbish at that. <laughs> I'm always thinking about the next thing and 100 yeah. miles an hour. That's the one thing people go on at me at, just be in the moment sometimes and I'm yeah. too busy charging about yeah. filling my day with things. But Yeah. I mean, those were, I don't even know if they were 10 questions, to be honest with you, and they weren't quick fire, but <laughs> they were some questions. They weren't too fast. Um, but I feel like it's a natural point to probably move on and like talk kind of what you were saying there about the World Cup and a lot of the a lot of the teammates that you have now I guess are there is a strong core that are still here mm -hmm. when you come back to camp now um, what what is it that's so special about the players that you play with here and the relationships that you have that when you come back to camp there's a real sense of just going way back and being really close knit yeah, I think there's a really good mix because, I mean, I think Pedro actually said in the first meeting, I think there's 12 players here who were at the World Cup. I mm -hmm. think he said there's 12 um, or around that. Even the fact that Jane Ross is back mm -hmm. in, she's someone for me who's, who's been there from the start, even from the youth national team age group. Mm -hmm. She's always been someone who I've just come all the way through with. So when you've, you've known some of these people for more years of your life than you've not known them, mm -hmm. then you quite naturally, you just, you build a bond because you've gone through so many highs and lows together. Not not just Jane, there's a lot of players now, you know, that you share those moments and I think that is what draws you together and then I think it enables just 
the culture within the player environment mm -hmm. to just to grow and when younger players or new players or different players come in there's already a good group that understand mm -hmm. just the dynamics of the group that they know that they want to make everyone feel welcome and um i don't know if that's maybe a, a scottishness thing mm -hmm. i think sometimes we talk about that humbleness of you know it's it is a huge strength of ours sometimes it's something that i think we can maybe go into games and give other people too much credit for but at the same time i think it's a big thing about being scottish you want everyone to make sure they're included you want everyone to have a good time mm -hmm. and i think the times that we've had success it's been because everyone's enjoyed being here and felt able to absolutely perform at their best and mm -hmm. that's something that you know for the ones that have experienced that we want to try and replicate and make that happen yeah i suppose part of that is just how important the identity is to the players of being Scottish, not not losing that, and mm -hmm. I think that's a common theme you see when when the players come back into camp. They just they feel like they're back with their their they're friends, their friends, <laughs> and they can just kind of slip back into to that. And I suppose that kind of breeds a really positive culture. And like you say, Jane coming back in, there's obviously players that have gone that have been really influential as well, Kim, mm -hmm. Jane, um, and you know you're the one that's leading the group now. How who would you say of the players that have all come and gone has kind of been the most influential on you? Ooh. Um, I think the one thing I've learned, I, I will answer that, but the one thing I've learned is you can you can learn from everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it, it's probably a little, it is difficult to name one person. I think naturally Kim is someone who I've become really close with the funniest thing is we've we've played against each other since we were 10 or 11 mm -hmm. and it took us both to end up in Seattle like the other side of the world before we became really close friends um but she would be someone who I would say has probably or I spend the most time speaking about right. those sorts of things you know we phone each other at least every week if mm -hmm. we don't see each other every week and um you know sometimes it's it's not always football things life mm -hmm. things too of course but I think when you when you play professional sport everything in your life all sort of impacts everything mm -hmm. um and so yeah I'd, I'd say Kim but also I would say there's been so many players club and country that I just think you know you can learn from everybody and you have to also try you know I think when you're an ambitious person competitive person you want to be the best person you can be mm -hmm. so I think you have to be open and willing to to let yourself learn from everybody do you think that being in a team you know and in a female and a women's sport environment that that there's more of a sense of kind of togetherness and sisterhood's a bit of a cliched word but do you think that that um is a big part of that team feeling and being able to back each other believe in each other pick each other up when you're down um because obviously you learn a lot whether it be win lose or draw you know there's a lot of moments how important is that kind of that that bond particularly in women's sport when um it has been not necessarily going on the same sort of levels and pathways as, as other games yeah i i just think for me that's not something that's needs to be you know gender specific i think that's just you know i would imagine that of the teams i've been in that have had the most success we've also had that great togetherness and I think it's one of those things that you have to do everything you can to try and make sure you create that in the teams that you're in. And I think for me, even being in teams, that's that's one of the best things about team sport. Mm -hmm. You get to do it with a group and sort of the powerful feeling of doing it together and that collectiveness, I think, brings that extra bit of enjoyment and mm -hmm. um, feeling when you do have the success. Um, you know, the other side of that is obviously when things don't go so well, then you've got each other to, to lean on, which of course is really important too. But I think um, it, in, the, in, sen in the sense of, you know, specifically to women, I think mm -hmm. probably the one thing I would say to that is often, you know, there are probably a lot of women that have experienced times when they have felt isolated or, or not felt empowered. And the one thing I do think about being in women's sport and being in a team sport is you feel that empowerment, you know, consistently, whether it's your team or whether you're, you know, looking up to other teams that have had success mm -hmm. or other individuals who've, who've done great things in, you know, different teams. I think it's a c constant and continual reminder of mm -hmm. the power that that has. And I think that is, is really important and powerful for women. Mm. 
Is that a responsibility that you recognised pretty early on when you were on your journey as a footballer? I think probably more on a subconscious level. Mm. Um, I think I was always just some, I was probably fortunate in that I played a lot of different sports when I was younger, team and individual, um, both with the boys, both just girls teams. Um, I think that I, I grew up just having a very sporty and involved childhood, which mm. I, I probably just loved sport and loved doing it with my friends. Mm -hmm. And I, I was really, I count myself as fortunate because I know a lot of people have not had the same experience and had the same opportunity. But um, that was probably the one thing from a young age that I, when I look back on, I was grateful for. And yeah, probably you're a lot more naive when you're younger. You don't always think about the, the broader context of things. But looking back, yeah, I probably was. Um, there probably were things that inspired me without maybe knowing. Yeah. And I suppose as a young person as well, you kind of touched on it there. And it's not gender specific, it's just how important sport is for young people to feel part of a team, to feel part of a group, to learn mm -hmm. in the good times and the hard times. And um, what I think one of the interesting things here is is what you kind of take from each other in the tougher times too and kind of the advice that you've been given. Is there anything that you can kind of think back on where you're like, that was a moment that you reflect on where you really learned about adversity? Oh. There's probably been a good few moments of adversity. <laughs> um, the, the biggest takeaway I've always had is, um, well, the two things I always think about is the biggest part of sport for me and where it has sat in my life, obviously now professionally, but which means sometimes you have to overlook this part because it is your job, but sport began for me as something that brought so much joy to me. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes reminding yourself of that is is sort of a really good leveling moment because it's so easy to get carried away and the emotional moments are the really difficult times. Um, I think perspective is important. Um, and then the other thing I've learned is, you know, to, to try and do it. I don't know, how do I word this? I think to try and understand what, what's morally important to you and, mm -hmm. and try and always choose to make the, the little decisions every day that are, are true to what you believe mm -hmm. to be the best thing to do. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, in sport, you can never control everything. Sometimes you're going to, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to play badly. You're going to do things that cost goals. You're going to miss, miss goals. Like the, the, everything is possibly get injured. You can't control all those things, but you can control a lot in your day that gives you the best chance mm -hmm. to limit those. Or at least if they happen, you can have peace and go, I did everything today and it was a, it was a bad moment. Yeah. You talked about emotional moments there. How do you reflect on or, or, or what have been some of the most emotional moments for you in the game to date? You've had a few. <laughs> I've had a few. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm always, in those moments, I'm always very, in the actual moment, I almost feel a little bit emotionless. Right. And I put on that hat of, you need to make sure everyone else is all right. Yeah. And so when I look back on the times when you probably would expect those to be the most emotional ones, for me, they're the, they're the moments when I've just gone quite almost like hard shell, just being like protect everyone mm -hmm. else. And or I'm like the person that needs to like reassure people that we're all right. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably not very good at actually like mm. unraveling the emotions of it. Um, that's one, not one of my, my strengths. Yeah. So when does that come down though? Because it all has to come out at some point. <laughs> I know. So I know, like I've seen you after the game and you do go into that protection mode where you just go, mm -hmm. you know, and you have to you have to do what needs done and say what needs said. But when does it, when do you, how do you manage to decompress? And because you have to get that off your yeah. shoulders, right? Yeah. What do you do? Nor see, normally what happens is I think I'm fine until I'm like really not fine. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, I don't know where this has come from. <laughs> and then someone will be like, well, let's look back at the last six months. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's normally how that happens. Uh -huh. um, I think I think just to that, I think I've 
in different points in my career, I've, I've, you know, there's a sports psychologist, whether that's working with a club or an individual, mm -hmm. that's someone who I think has become a person that's really important. Um, and also, you know, it's always good to have family. Mm -hmm. to, you, you have a person or more than one person who you can sort of offload, who mm -hmm. understands it and you can get it out. I think I normally do sort of try and release those emotional moments yeah. through that. But I, I normally take it away from within the football environment and yeah. probably deal with it, not privately in the sense of just myself, but, but I don't typically offload when I feel probably emotionally drained within mm -hmm. the environment I'm in. And I think that's just, you know, everyone has their own ways. And yeah. that's just the way I find the easiest and best way for me. Yeah. And I think that's important as well for people to remember, like everyone copes differently. And that's the thing about this squad as well. There are so many different characters and types of people. Mm -hmm. And you can see even within the leadership group, lots of a real mix of people and in, in the way that they handle things. And I suppose that you kind of learn that about each other as well, don't you? When, yeah. when one needs picked up, when one needs like a wee bit of, you know, whatever it is, an arm around the shoulder or whatever. Um, but there are a lot of leaders in this team. Yeah. You're the captain, but you've, you're surrounded by a, a lot of strong women. Yeah, and I think that is really important because also as well, you know, there are different types of people and we actually have a, I think we've got a great team. There's lots of little, littler groups of, you know, people who are really good friends, mm -hmm. like really good friends, you know, go on holiday in the summer mm -hmm. or, you know, spend time together outside of camp. And I think that's really nice too, but it also allows us to then have a different, you know, a, a broader group of people as mm -hmm. within that leadership group to make sure that across the whole squad, there's sort of some, at least one person in that leadership group that everyone in the whole team feels that they can go to. So mm -hmm. if there's something that needs, you know, to get out or be spoken about or discussed, there's an avenue and a channel for everyone to mm -hmm. feel like they've got space for that. And I think that's, that's really important because, of course, it'd be unreasonable to think that mm -hmm. one or two people can be that for the whole team. You know, yeah. there's just, as you say, different types of people deal with things differently, different ages. You know, there's... Yeah. And different environments as well, because, you, you know, we're here in a, obviously in a Scotland context, mm -hmm. but you've been in America, you're obviously in WSL now. And how much do you take from each of those environments? Because I would imagine each of them is really different. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, obviously, you can speak from experience, but... I would, I would imagine the culture and, and environment in America is very different. Very, very. How much did you take from that as a, as a player? I think that's probably been the biggest life learning curve for me. Mm -hmm. um, it opened my eyes, on a people level, opened my eyes to so much. Mm -hmm. um, I think in America they do a much better job of allowing people to um, be who they want to be in, mm -hmm. the, in the sense of... Um, I just feel like the diversity of the, the people I met was just so much broader. Yeah. I think there's a lot of pressure in this country, well, not in Spain, in, in the UK, <laughs> yeah. but I think in the UK to very much fit in. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think that was a, a huge lesson for me. And just even the cult culturally, it's different. Um, the way they live, I think they're a lot more active and outdoors and different things you can go and do in your free time. And I absolutely love my time in the US and in Australia. Um, the biggest thing I think still is you meet some amazing people. Yeah. It's the people you remember. I had yeah. great football and experience to um, learn so much in that capacity, but it's it's absolutely on a, a people level, that's the best mm -hmm. bit about it. Do you think that shaped a lot of the sort of person, player, kind of leader that you've become that, that time over there? Definitely, Yeah. definitely. I think I, I got the chance to play with some amazing players that have achieved some of the best things in the game. So naturally you learn a lot from them on and off the pitch. Um, but it wasn't just necessarily the ones, you, sort of the higher profile ones that you expect that. I think the, yeah, I met so many people, but there was just so many great characters that, mm -hmm. again, going back to, you literally can learn from everybody. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was, it was the most valuable thing and the most amazing thing I've done. Yeah, and you've had so many experiences and we've touched on some of them already, but I suppose, do you now think about your legacy and what you're handing over and what you're what you're doing, or are you still just kind of living in the moment without kind of having that? Is it a little bit of both? Um, it's maybe a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily think of, I don't necessarily see it as the legacy. Mm -hmm. I feel that's maybe, I feel like someone else has to say that. Maybe. Right, okay. I think, I don't know, maybe I'm, I don't know. 
maybe that's just like a lot. Yeah, I get what you mean. Like it maybe just... sounds a bit grand for what you think. Yeah, yeah. Like... <laughs> no, I understand that. I try and live in the moment because I, I want to play at the highest level for as long as I can, and I work really hard to do mm. that day to day at the club. And when I come here, for someone who's been playing the game for the last 16, 17 years, mm. in terms of at, you know senior level football, I don't think it would be impossible to have played that long and you know been professional for the last 10 years without having an understanding that you're you're changing the game you know the yeah. game is continually evolving and being a part of that and taking responsibility for that of course is having an impact and I think you take you, you get to a point where of course you absolutely take pride in that and you yeah. try and do everything you can to realize that so that's pos that's probably like the, the legacy part as you put it but to me I just think that's that also ties into me just trying to do the best I can every single day for me and also trying to do the best I can every single day for the team that yeah. I'm part of. And just kind of on that, you know, you talked about playing as long as possible at the highest level possible. How much has that changed as you've gone through your career? Like how how much harder has that gotten? Like, do you feel like you have to put more of a shift in now? Or like, how does that, <laughs> like genuinely? The body definitely hurts more now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think the game, the game, the level of the game now compared to where it was, you know, even sort of three years ago, five years ago, ten years ago, it's it's evolving really, really yeah. quickly, really quickly. And and now you're seeing players come through that have been a part of academies since they were, mm -hmm. you know, ten, eleven years old. Yeah. So the exposure they've had to the game, the training, the, that technical detail that they've they've got, and the physical preparation they've had through those sort of development years, that's that's only going to continue to have a massive impact on how the game continues to develop. Um, so there's no doubt the game today is at a high, a, a high level. I think through my whole career though, based on what's been possible at the time, I'm just a competitive person. Mm -hmm. Like I've just always wanted to give my all and that, that sort of, you know, you know, it was the same when I was doing my school exams. I always mm -hmm. wanted to get good grades and I had to work hard for that. Like I was lucky I had a, a sporty year when I was at school. Like. Mm -hmm. We wanted to win the netball tournament, and mm -hmm. like I was, yeah. I was competitive with literally absolutely everything. Like when we play Scrabble on Christmas Day at yeah. home, like I want to win. So yeah. I think I only know to do things at a hundred percent. Yeah, and that's part of that competition. It's obviously just in you, though. And I suppose when you talked about the young girls coming through now, like how much does it, you know, how much do you get out of seeing the development? Like you say, it's it's growing so quickly now mm -hmm. um, and in, particularly in Scotland it's only going to grow quicker and quicker I think year on year when you look back at that now and you see the opportunities and the pathways and you know even the 17s and 19s just now for us there's some really Amazing. exciting players they're doing mm -hmm. really really well and um, the future's pretty bright yeah I think that's brilliant I think was the 19s that were away last week some really brilliant results and yeah, I absolutely love that because I want us I want us to be a nation that's at as many big tournaments as is possible in the future. And I think when you see the young young players coming through, you see the optimism of just just their ability, their technical ability. Even sort of recent players that have broke into the senior team, Emma and, and Kirsty, especially, just being those those younger players and you just see the technique they have and the skill level. Mm -hmm. It it genuinely is so exciting because you yeah. know that that's that's come about because the evolution of the game that's come about because there's now opportunities for young girls who have this ability to make the most of it and and thrive in it so um yeah i think that's really exciting yeah now especially players that you see and i think the young players that are in the, the squads just now can see the pathway they can see the evolution and the possibilities that are there which is it's just so important like you say for players like Emma and, mm -hmm. and Kirsty and all the Emma and Kirsties around the country that are still yeah. to be discovered and and I think you see that as well as you know we've seen Caroline out doing a camp last week 150 kids out at it you know like wanting to get involved and looking up to you guys and um, that must be really pleasing for you on a match day as well when you're seeing all the boys and girls out there coming out to support you does that how much does that mean when you're out there can you take that in I think it's hard to take it in because it's sometimes still a bit surreal that that's that it is it mm -hmm. has kind of 
happened. Mm -hmm. I genuinely can remember, you know, this camp, especially this time of year, for a long time when I first was in the squad, we used to go to Cyprus, and the only people that came to watch were if people's parents maybe were able to come out, yeah. got a little bit of time off. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just really cool. And I think, you know, the, there is really no bar, there's no ceiling, mm -hmm. I think. And I think what's also become one of the the really exciting things more recently is that demographic of fans is is just getting bigger and bigger. And yeah. um, you know, I think it goes back to as well, we want to be inclusive and I mm -hmm. think it's brilliant to just now people are becoming more aware of it, there's more visibility, there's there's more people want to to get a little part of it in whatever mm -hmm. whatever way they can and um Again, it goes back to what sport is, you know, it's something that at the end of the day brings joy in so many mm -hmm. different levels to so many people. And um, yeah, it's, it's why we love it. To kind of wrap this up, when we talk, started out talking about the theme of International Women's Day and one of the quotes that caught my eye this year, um, and it is kind of sums it all up for me is, um, when women aren't present, we must ask, if not, why not? When women are discriminated against, we must call it poor practice. When the treatment of women is not equitable, we must take action and we must do this each and every time. Did you take all no, that in? I did. Right? I think we should end on that. I don't think I can say anything more <laughs> more uplifting. <laughs> um, yeah, like, what does that, what do those words, what do they mean to you? I know you've just heard them for the first time there, delivered impeccably. Very, yes, beautiful. Okay, but what, seriously though, like, yeah. you know, it is a quote that is, it feels like it hits a lot of different levels, a lot of different mm -hmm. marks. What what do you what do you take from that? Me personally, I think it's it's reassurance that the work that we have done and the sort of the battles that you know you faced or maybe the hurdles you've had to climb over are worth it and just other people have, have probably fought them before you and same or different environments, different capacities, but um, I know that I've I've been given opportunities where I've been in a role that, you know, you're either a leader or um, you maybe have greater responsibility to sort of speak up and stand up for certain things. And um, it's not always easy. In, in fact, often it is, it's, it's the opposite of that. Almost always it isn't easy and that's why it can be so important to do it. Um, but because of that, I think just sometimes hearing those words are, are, an, important, are an important reminder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good point to end it actually. Rachel, it's been a pleasure as Thank always. You very much.